passion for tournament fishing has meant that for the past two, two and a half years that I have owned a bow, that I have missed the rut, or missed the opportunity to hunt during a rut until now. This trip for me wasn't about trying to get a trophy stag as my first ever deer on a bow. This was about experiencing a rut, even though we were late, but experience a rut and feeling what it is like as a hunter to be able to call in a deer. Being the back end of April, this is the latest that any of the guys have been out for a red stag rut in this particular area ever. And the first afternoon, it was looking as though we were too late. We didn't hear any stags and don't even think we saw a deer. We didn't hear any static roar overnight at all and even in the morning at the deer camp you can normally hear deer roar during the rut from the camp and it was super quiet apart from kookaburras. We headed to a couple of key areas where the guys had heard them roar a couple of weeks ago. Again, super quiet. We sat there and waited, listened. Of the three or four stags that we could hear roaring, none of them were in our property. They were all on neighbouring land and it wasn't a good sign. We decided to make a move and head a couple of ridges across deeper into the property and finally we heard some some stags roaring on the property we were on even though they were two to three gullies away from us it was still a good sign we were still yet to see a stag we had heard some calling and they all seemed to be a long way away at least one to two ridges away so we've basically given up for the morning, it was mid-morning, walking back to the vehicle and there was a red stag probably 500 yards from the vehicle and he disappeared over the bridge. We decided to wait there for 5 to 10 minutes and just have a listen and we could hear two stags and three or four does all calling down in this gully. So we decided we needed to go down ourselves and have a look.
we barely got into this gully and I saw a few does and a stag go back up out of the ridge and one particular stag, for whatever reason we haven't made any calls, just decided to track all the way along the side of this ridge straight at us. He was basically staring down the barrel of the camera. and came all the way to us within 20 yards for a shot. Dean can see the stag and some hinds. I couldn't see the hinds, I saw the stag. And the hinds went, I think, I think the stag, the hinds must have gone up over the ridge, not far from the vehicle, right? But the stag that was there, I think was a chaser stag, was a shit one, came straight at us. And we're just in the grass, not even not real good in the grass. And, and he's walking straight at us and at about 40, he's looking straight at us. And I've, and, and, and I've got an arrow and a bow, and then he, he peels off a bit and just starts walking side on, and he's, but he's looking, you know? And I never used my rangefinder at any point. Yeah. Because I, I didn't think that I could, because, you know, he was just honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's a double two. Yeah. And it, I'm gonna say at 20 yards, 22 yards, something like that, Yeah. I drew, and he stopped, and I reckon I held in the middle of the front of his shoulder, and I shot, and fucking, that must, must have fucking missed. <laughs> and he ran away, and stopped, and stood, and scratched, and... <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> I fucked it up. But did you get it on video? Yes. yes. Oh, that's fucking... Steer had jump the string. So as you could hear the string release, this deer had already dropped six to eight inches. Before the arrow comes into frame, it's down eight to maybe 12 inches. And by the time it has turned around, the deer is basically completely out of shot of the camera. The arrow has gone well over its head and the deer stood back up and started trotting away. And to the naked eye, it's almost impossible to see, but in slow-mo, this thing is amazing. And this bloke, this bloke wasn't, the double five obviously wasn't roaring. Mm. And the other bloke, that's why he was just moaning and groaning. He was yeah. telling my mate to fuck off. Mm. And I just stumbled right into him. And they were just, yeah. So. The next morning, we decided to head into the gully where we had heard them from a distance the morning before and, and start over there as well as going on. As we were heading into this gully, it appeared as if we were too late. We saw a doe getting chased by a stag and another stag chasing after those two shortly after. Followed by several roars from a stag, possibly with all the does, down in the neighbouring gully, which again was not an app Not scared.
We tracked further around the ridge, away from these stags, hoping to find some more activity. We found a bunch of does sitting off the top of the ridge. We watched them for a while, and then we heard some more stags. moved across two more gullies and this stag still calling and responding to Mark's calls so this was going to be the one.
I've got in a good position to be able to take this shot. It was just starting to get to that time of the day when things start making a noise. Mm -hmm. So he just dropped over, went, went through the fence into that greener stuff, you know, because it's. Yeah. Like, and, and we probably only went in 30 yards and we and, and, and we just sat at, at, at a tree and I and, and had a roar. And this and this stag roared like only 250, 200 metres away. Last afternoon at the deer camp was time for me to be behind the bow. sitting at the base camp and heard a deer roar directly in front of us on the ridge less than five minutes walk so we decided that we'd start there and follow the stag positioned ourselves on the top of this ridge so that we had an ample viewpoint to be able to look in both directions as well as the wind in our face. We sat there for 40 minutes and the stag never roared again and we didn't see. Just as we decided it was time to move, the stag decided to make himself known to us and he roared in the gully that we'd just been watching for the whole time.
got in position. Got my knees behind a tree and I was ready to take the shot, albeit my heart racing and my breath struggling. Stag walked closer to us but was still about 50 yards away and he knew something wasn't right. He pushed back and went, started tracking away from us further around the ridge and was no longer responding to any calls. We quickly backed out of there and got back around the ridge so that we could meet him face on on the other side once he trotted over that side. We saw him come over the top of the bridge. He had one call, he responded straight away. Even halfway through the call, he was responding. He got within 30 yards. He faced away from us. I was able to draw the bow. was broadside to me and let out a roar and I was able to take the shot. This whole experience, tracking a deer, talking to a deer and being able to get close enough to take him a shot with a bow is something that I will never ever ever forget.